can do is I can set, uh, for example, if I wanted to align all of these nodes, say this node, this node, this node, and this node with this selected node here, yeah. the way I would do that is I hold the control key down and hold my right mouse button down on my mouse. I'm, now I'm holding it down, I'm not releasing. And I'm going to move my cursor over top of this origin uh, node, and then I'm going to release. Now what that's done is set that as the anchor point for all other nodes when they're selected. So what, what I can do at this point is I'm going to select these th two nodes. How do you select and keep the other selection? I'm, I'm actually holding the shift key down, so just, just I'll describe it a bit better. I'm this is like in Word then. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select this. It's like in Microsoft Word, right? Right. If, if yeah. you and then I hold and then I hold my shift key down and I wanna come back and select these two notes. Okay. And now I've got those notes selected. Now I'm gonna hold my control key and I'm gonna use this um, icon here to adjust the nodes up and down to align to this node right here. So you see that it's automatically snapped those nodes to that um, uh, along that plane. A quick question: Why are two of them circles and one of them, two of them are X's crossed? Well, <coughs> those are just different different types of nodes. These support um, what we call curve. The round ones. The round ones are curves. Yeah. Right. And the square ones are corner nodes. So the, I can change that. Well, first thing I could do is I probably want to delete this one. So I'm going to select it, yeah. and I can hit the delete key on my keyboard, okay? And that get, gets rid of the um, the um, the round node. Now I'm going to select this node, and I want to change that to a corner node. So I'm going to hold my right mouse button down again, and I get this floating palette of yeah. rolls. I want to select the cross here, and that changes that to a, a, a corner node. Okay. Could I have directed, theoretically selected them all, change them all to crosses quickly? If I selected them all? I could have done that right off the, off, right the get-go. I could do that. Okay. Yeah, so that could be done. Now, go back, zoom out a hair. Okay. What's important on this T, zoom out again. I need to see another letter. I need to make sure that the, the width of the top of the T is consistent with other letters in this word computer. Okay. So how do I make that happen? Uh, well, if, if you wanted to make sure that the top of this T is aligned with the other objects in this um, word, yeah. in this word uh, you would need to basically select, and can I just use two, two letters as yeah. an example for now? I would basically select these two objects. I would go to Arrange and then Make Path. And that means that these two objects, when I edit them, are now I can edit them both at the same time. Okay. Right? Now, if I wanted to make sure that these, all these nodes up here align together, I could use this as the anchor point. So I'm going to select it, hold my control key can down. Can stop you for a sec? Use the U because it's more level. Sorry. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'm now going to, now I have to make a path out of all three of these. So I'm going to select these three, yeah. and then I'm going to go to Arrange and then Make Path. And now I'm going to double click. All right. So you notice the difference here is after I make a path out of the three objects, I'm now able to edit all of those objects, all of those, um, all of those objects as a single entity now. Yeah. Right. So say now I'm going to use this as my anchor point to align the rest of these nodes. Okay. So I'm holding my control key down, right mouse button. I'm still holding the right mouse button. I move this over my origin point, and I release. So that's now marked as the origin. Now I need to select the rest of these nodes. I held shift. What well, you held the shift? And I held the shift key down. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go control right mouse button and I'm going to get. The, I'm going to use, tell the tool to move the nodes or, um, up or down to align to that node. Okay. And that's what it's done. Perfect. Okay. Now, do you mind? Uh, now that everything else applies if we're putting the stones on once you clean up the artwork, etc. Can you do me a favor? Is there a way to choose a higher accuracy of the vectorization? Uh, yes, actually. And, and is there a detriment to doing it different than the default? Or is there well, it it's really comes down to, um, in, in the terms of the way the program generates vector artwork from a scanned image, there's, a, there's an accuracy value that is set up in the program. And you would think that, you know, making it more accurate makes more sense. Um, but, you know, in some cases,
cases, the um, if you look at the edge of a bitmap, it's actually not a very, it's not actually a straight line. It's made up of a bunch of square dots or pixels, and following the edge of the pixels doesn't necessarily make for a cleaner artwork because it, you get this stair step effect, right? So you end up with more nodes to edit. Right. Okay. Fair so so in some cases it makes more sense that you actually um, you don't have an accurate you know, an accurate... Um, you have more in a general path. So, so the where, where you would do that is under the... Um, there's, a, there's different kinds of options in here that you can select from for, for higher or lower accuracy. So you may want to try picking one of these options here and then applying it to the bitmap and see if you get a better result. And for people that are really uh, um, uh, advanced users, you can click on the trace setup and adjust the different parameters that are uh, a lot you can you can play with in terms of how the line is following the edge of the bitmap. So you know you can have a like a tolerance value, and uh, you want to tell the program to find the corners a little bit more accurately or less accurately. But these are different options in the software.